Well, I'm going to start for our worship tonight and our devotion, as I have these last, I think, two weeks or so. I'm losing track of time. Today, my coffee pot broke. Thankfully, we had an extra one that we had bought back in Minnesota, and we decided not to use it yet because we just descaled our, our old one, but like it totally died today. And so we got a new one, and then Arasu came home and we realized that he, we had his old one from his, his office when he had a, a congregation back in Minnesota as well. And we have a French press and a hand, grind, a hand bean grinder. So we are set if another one goes and if we lose electricity, we will have coffee, which is a good, it's a good thing. It's those little things to be thankful for in life. So if you need coffee or if your coffee maker breaks, we could probably set our, our extra one on your front step so that you can be provided for it, just so you know, if you live locally. <laughs> you have to have fun sometimes right now, right? We, our evening prayer begins with, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept us this day. And we pray that you would forgive us all of our sins where we have got done wrong and graciously kept us keep us this night. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, and souls, and all things. Let your holy angel be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. Compton. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. Now, the night hymn I chose tonight is number 570. It is now the day is over. Let's see what these lyrics have to say for us. It's by Sabine Baring Goad from the 19th century. Now the day is over, night is drawing nigh, shadows of the evening steal across the sky. Jesus, give the weary calm and sweet repose. With your tenderest blessing, may our eyelids close. Comfort every sufferer watching late in pain. Those who's, who plan some evil from their sin restrain. Through the long night watches, may your angels spread their bright wings above me, watching round my bed. When the morning wakens, when I may, then may I arise, pure and fresh and sinless in your holy eyes. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, and to you, blessed Spirit, while the ages run. That's lovely, isn't it? I love those baptismal imagery that they have, the daily dying and rising in Christ that we have, and that praying that God restrains the, those who would do evil from their sin and comfort ever, every sufferer watching late in pain. That's not just the people that are ill themselves, but the caregivers are being held in this, in this psalm too, this hymn too. So let us confess. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. May the mercy of God by the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, in whom we are forgiven. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's start over here. You, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. O Lord, our God. Jeremiah 14, verse 9. So my Sabbath today from Wayne Mueller is, it is good. And God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. 
people, um, our writer begins by saying, our willingness to, willingness to rest depends on what we believe we will find there. At rest, we come face to face with the essence of life. If we believe life is fundamentally good, we will seek our rest as a taste of that goodness. If we believe life is fundamentally bad or flawed, we will be reluctant to quiet ourselves, afraid of meeting the darkness that resides in things or in ourselves. And then it talks about how God, when God created, throughout the creation, God said, and God saw that it was good. Then there was evening, then there was morning the first day. And then God saw it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day, and the third day. And then after God created man and woman in the likeness of God, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Sabbath rest invites us to step back and see that life and God's creation is good. Sabbath time assumes that if we step back and rest, we will see the wholeness of it all. We will naturally up apprehend the good in how things are, taste the underlying strength, beauty, and wisdom that lives even in the difficult days. Take delight in the gift of blessing and of being alive. Jesus began his Sermon on the, on the Mount, arguably the most important teaching of his life, by saying, blessed are. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. He does not say, blessed will be the poor when they finally achieve a certain level of economic indep independence. He does not say, blessed will be those who mourn after they have endured their period of unspeakable grief and received support from their clergy or family. He does not say blessed will be the meek after they graduate from assertiveness training and claim their inner strength. He says blessed are. Mm -hmm. Not they will one day be blessed, but they are blessed right now. The poor are blessed even in their poverty. Those who mourn are blessed even in their grief. The meek, the merciful, even those who are persecuted, blessed, blessed, blessed. Not later not when their tri trials are over, not when they are fixed, right here, right now. There is a blessing for you here, now, in this very moment. All Jesus' teaching seems to hinge on this singular truth concerning the nature of life. It is all right. Do not worry about tomorrow. I have come that you may have life abundantly. Be not afraid. Over and over in parable story and example, Jesus insists that regardless how it goes for us, we are cared for, we are safe, we are all right. There is a light in the world, a kingdom of heaven inside us that will bear us up, regardless of our sorrow, fear, or loss. We do not wait to enjoy the harvest for our life. We are already blessed. The kingdom of God is already here. It is within you and among you through the Holy Spirit. Like the creator who steps back and see, sees that it is good, Jesus just as confidently insists that we are already whole. In this light of Sabbath prescription is a loving reminder to take full advantage of the condition that already exists. At rest, our souls are restored. This is the only commandment that begins with the word remember. As if, it, as if it refers to something we already know but have forgotten. It is good, it is whole, it is beautiful. In our hurry and worry and acquiring and working we forget. Rest, take delight in the goodness of creation and remember how good it is. He gives an example of um, a fire that ravaged, ravaged uh, Lama Mountain in New Mexico in 1996 and how it just decimated a retreat center and a bunch of other buildings super quickly. And that three, year, three weeks after the fire, Bread for the Journey, which Wayne Miller uh, Mueller worked for, they went out there to kind of survey the damage and see how they could financially support it to get back on his feet. And he said he was marveling, but only after three days out before, this is Sea of Green, he says, 
small oak seedlings, six to 10 inches high, blanket the forest floor. Without any human effort to clear or seed, already the earth was pushing out life. Creation creates life at every revolution. It is incapable of doing otherwise. Were we to reduce the plant, the planet to cinders, a holocaust of ignorance and greed, still the universe would create life from the ashes of our clumsiness. Sabbath is a day we walk in the forest, walk among the fruits of our harvest and the ruins of our desperations and see what lives. On the Sabbath, we rest and see that it is good. This one is interesting. I mean, it, as it is good, I, I, at first I passed this one by because I didn't want to hear about anything that was good right now. And then I decided today to read it again. And how um, that litany of Genesis chapter one of it is good and it is good and it's good. Um, I know we live in a fall as a fallen humanity. And um, as we talked this morning, that now and not yet. But there is something that to name the good, to name the blessings and not like hashtag blessed. I'm everything's great. Therefore I'm good. But as, as Jesus does, does in the Sermon on the Mount in the midst of my grief and blessed in the midst of my, my need, I am blessed in the midst of my worry. I am blessed. Um, I mean, Jesus has all those, but when you look throughout the Bible, how many times do not worry um, the birds of the air, the flowers of the field, how much more does God love you? Thinking about the, the cherry blossoms um, that are blooming right now, and we can't even go see them. And the tulips that are going to be blooming soon, and we can't go see them. And yet they're still blooming. And yet God is still giving them life. How much more does God love us? How much more does God adorn us? And to look for those moments of beauty and blessedness and goodness, um, even in these times, in the midst, when life continues to happen. So the Sabbath practice for tonight is to kind of be subversive a little bit. It's to share blessings. Genesis is filled with it. The end of Genesis ends with the patriarchs blessing all of his children, how blessings have been transitioned. And so there are many ways to offer your blessing. You may bless your children, your lover, your friend by placing your hand on their head and offering a prayer for their healing. Wash your hands first and afterwards, but you can still do it. Their well-being and their happiness. Let them feel the truth of your prayer in their bodies. When this happens, many report feeling the physical blessing actually enter their body. It is a precious as it is free, completely, completely gratuitous. Another practice invites us to bless strangers quietly and secretly. Offer it to people you notice on the street, in the market, on the bus. May you be happy. May you be at peace. Feel the blessing move through your body as you offer it. Notice how you both receive some benefit from the blessing. Gently, almost without effort, each and every blessing becomes a Sabbath. When I was, when Aras and I were leaving Guatemala, one of our um, people that came down every year were a, a couple from um, Austin, Texas. And they were just wise, lovely souls. And we were so thankful for them. They were some of the first people we told that we were leaving. And what they did to both of us is they put the sign of the cross on our forehead, each of us. And they said, Jesus loves you and so do I. And that blessing was such a remarkable gift to us. Um, so Horacio and I have done that with our kids ever since, every single night. We, we, make, we do our normal prayers and then we, Jesus loves you and so do I on their foreheads and they do it on our foreheads. And I remember a time when Abigail was little and one of us was traveling, we, she would make these big crosses when we couldn't put them on each other's foreheads. She would nail them to the ground with her pretend hammer and like stretch them all up the ceiling and then all the way throughout the room. So there'd be big crosses blessing us um, that would be imaginary uh, hammered into our floor, permanently fixed, blessing us and keeping us and reminding us whose we were. Um, and so I invite you to do that. I invite you to bless those who you share 
home with this night, those who are far away and beloved to you, and complete strangers that look like they could use a blessing. And just say, God bless this person and release it. And as God has promised through many of the covenants in the Bible, those who we bless, God will bless. That's one of the promises that God gives us. And we know that God is a promise keeper. When God promises us, God fulfills that promise. So thank you for being a blessing to me. And I pray that you are also, and I trust that you also will be blessings to others. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Hear my prayer, O Lord, listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you, when I awake, your presence will give me joy. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear and gracious God, we ask you to be the peacemaker in many an anxious and troubled heart and mind this day. For those who today was more burden than they could bear, bear that burden for them, Lord. Bring them rest this night and watch over them so that they may rise in the morning, renewed for a new day, graced by your presence. For those who had moments of, of laughter and joy and were able to see the blessedness and the goodness around them, we give thanks, Lord. And we ask that you open all of our hearts and our minds to see the goodness of your creation, the goodness of your providing, the goodness of your love for us and your forgiveness for us this day. Continue to bless us in the midst of our grieving and our meekness and our worry. Hold us tight, sustain us, that we might be blessed by you so that we can be blessings to others who need it so much, Lord. Open our mouths to share that blessing where it's needed the most in the days ahead. Thank you for using us as your children for the sake of the world. And thank you for resting us in your loving arms this night. And thank you for teaching us to pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now in peace, I will lie down and sleep. You alone, O oh God, make me secure. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.